Artistic Gamer 7 and welcome back to Small Sims for Create a Sim D&D Edition where I take my D&D characters that I have created stories to, made a drawing for, came up with all the info and try to create them into a sim. So today we actually, I, I don't I haven't had many of these, um, but we have a male sim today, a male character, though technically speaking, this particular race, eh, when it comes to gender. <laughs> so this is Raz, Raz Torres is his name or his, the name he mainly goes by, I should say, and his race is actually a changeling. So if you know anything about changelings and D&D, or I think there's like other versions of changeling changelings like similar things in other th stories and stuff like that. But I think sometimes they're called changelings. Sometimes there's other names for them. Um, I I had a name and another name in my head from like some other thing, and it was what that series called it or that thing that group whatever. But you know, it's already left my head. Gotta love my brain sometimes easily forgets things in like two seconds. Anyway, so changelings basically can change into whatever they want and a lot of times they can mimic other people's looks and make them look like that and Raz here totally totally uses the fact that he's a changeling to his benefit completely. <laughs> so you should be seeing a drawing of him right now. He's sort of in generic adventurer's gear which obviously like you when he's in like more of his like regular form or what he tries to perceive as his regular form it is definitely he doesn't want to necessarily stand out so he's just sort of in more of your basic gear or whatever but um the thing is with changelings i feel like a few different people amongst like i think the official art for a lot of changeling looks like without being in some sort of form that it has forced itself into they're like these very strange gray looking creatures and part of me wants to take that but twist it a little bit i want them to look slightly more humanoid because when you really think about a lot of the creatures in D, &D even when they start being really far out there for like lizard folk and dragonborn and the Tabaxi really wanted to say the Khajiit, but you know, that's Skyrim. Elder Scrolls. Anyway, Tabaxi. Um, those sort of creatures, obviously, they look less humanoid, but they still have a slightly humanoid structure to them. There is only some races that don't have that much of hum humanoid structure, but even then, like the Grung and the Luxodons, like... Yeah, you could see more frog and elephant in those than you can human, but there is still a slightly human structure. And technically, I think I remember my boyfriend showing me what the gray form of the changelings looks like, and yeah, it technically is change like humanoid, but it it starts to stretch the bounds and looks almost more like generic form of a Wendigo before they have like the deer skull and fur and stuff on them, but anyway. <laughs> I personally would like to think they're more structured, more closer to a human, since so many of the creatures have that generic humanoid body structure. <laughs> yeah, they may be gray or white or whatever. Part of me wants to go with white because even gray technically has some color in it. White is the absence of all colors, while black is the presence of all colors. So that's why I personally would rather go closer to white than gray, because white would be the absent of any sort of colors or vibrance to the creature so personally my head canon is that their natural form is more like a solid white and they look more like some sort of oddly humanoid clay thing <laughs> so but also in my head is that they ha have a chosen form that is like their generic form and this is what Raz's is this is where I'm trying to get at but he is, I want to go with the theory with him particular that he's changed so much that he does have certain sections that it's sort of hard to keep, ch like, change. Like, he has to really, really focus to change that part. So, like, right now you should be able to see, like, the arm that is pure white heading up into the chest and onto the neck. Obviously, he has one eye color that is slightly lighter than the other, even though they're both a version of that color. So, like, in this instance, green, one is a lighter green than the other. His hair has some coloring in it, but there's a lot of white going on. 
I want to imagine that he is ch- he's been constantly changing almost too much in a way, if that makes sense, for his age or whatever. So, like, when he's in his more relaxed form, it is harder for him to keep that. It's almost like he has to focus a little bit harder to make sure that he changes all parts of his body. So, in his relaxed form, he's sort of like, I don't care, I'm just gonna let it, let it do its thing so I can just chill. So that's why, you know, he has this white section. Now, in Sims, I did this as a tattoo, so it's going to be on every single one of his body things. But I also imagine that if this was realistically happening, that they probably would set rules for him for this reality show sort of mini-series I'm doing after. Like, you cannot change your full look and confuse the rest of the cast. You especially cannot change into one of the cast because... We're just, we're not gonna, that, we do want drama, but we don't want that much drama. (laughs) We don't want physical fights breaking out here. Well, no, no, we, some of y'all carry swords, no. (laughs) So that sort of situation. So, I technically, though, you won't see it in this video except for maybe a little hint of it in the screenshots at the end, but... I did technically give him some other looks on some of his everyday and like athletic and stuff like that where he slightly alters things. He alters what he can get rid- get uh, ri- like away with. So like he changes his hair color and his hairstyle and like length and stuff like that and the style of clothing, but you he doesn't change the white arm because that is like a get dead giveaway that it's him, so he's like, I, I should be able to get rid of But it, there's a part of him, like, it, once I tell his backstory, it will make a little bit more sense. But there's a part of him that probably would feel weird about not constantly changing and not trying to change part of him. Like, I think he's just gotten so accustomed and used to it that when he doesn't do it, it's almost like, it's almost like he's addicted. And when he doesn't, it's like... He's having withdrawals, (laughs) so that's sort of how I see it, but also I thought it'd just be really fun to randomly see what he decides to look like that day as I record the little mini-series. So yeah, that will be something to look forward to when the mini-series comes on. But, let's talk about Raz's backstory here. So, um, his main goal is basically to run away from the messes that he has made. (laughs) And what I say, mean by that is, some of them are legit just... You know, he stole from a store, or, you know, he caused, like, some sort of chaos as a prank or whatever. But for the most part, um, he is a very, uh, he's a ladies' man, and a, and a, um, what is the opposite term? Ladies' man, and then, uh, I don't know. I know there's a term, but anyway, you know, it doesn't matter, male or female, he can probably entice them, (laughs) um, depending on whether or not. He just has to figure out whether or not they're straight, they're bi, they're gay, what are they? And then he he can switch into it. And okay, why is my Xbox just made a noise? And I didn't even know my Xbox was still on. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I don't know if you could have heard it on the mic anyway. But yeah, so that is the personality. Um, he's very similar to a character that I've already talked about um, before, which was Amaris. And I did talk about in hers that towards the end that she is slightly connected to someone. That is Raz. I eventually would imagine that if they ever ran into each other in sort of my head canon, um, obviously depending on if I ever played these characters, depending on whether I did like actually try to be a DM. If I, made it, if I was a DM, they would be friends. They would be like best friends. But if I was playing one of these characters and someone else was the DM, I would tell them about the other character. If they choose to add them, they can, but obviously they probably wouldn't be around all the time, so they couldn't be as big of besties in their head, like, in that version of me playing them, than if I was the DM. But, in my head, um, in a world where all these characters are existing at the same time, they are besties. They are each other's wingmans, they help each other out, like, you know help pick people up, hopefully get some money out of it, but he, um, he's done it way more than her, probably partially because he can get away with it a lot easier than her, and she does it in more of a way of not tricking, necessarily, it's more of, like, a lot of times they know that, you know, she's just doing this for money, but they're doing it anyway, versus he sometimes just straight up tricks people, and sometimes it's not just for money, sometimes it's just for fun, so... (laughs) He's a little worse, <laughs> but, uh, y- you get what I'm saying, though. You should, like, he definitely just, he likes to have fun, and sometimes he doesn't think about the consequences until later, so he's constantly on the run. 
<laughs> but yeah, I would imagine once they ran into each other, they would click immediately. So I do actually have some screenshots at the very end of this video of those two together. And considering they both have spicy attitudes, I definitely gave them slightly spicy poses. So look forward to that to the end if you would like to see those. But let's talk about the rest of him in terms of D&D. He is a ranger slash rogue, more of a ranger. His subclass would be the Gloomstalker Conclave, while Rogue is a thief. Yep, and there you go. That is his D&D stuff all wrapped up into one. So let's talk about his sim version. His sim version would have a serial romantic, though there's a part of me that there's now a new romance aspiration. I gotta look more into it. I might switch to that. I know it's supposed to be like Villainous Valentine, so it's not like a good thing, but I need to see the details of that because that might be more up his alley. But right now he has Serial Romantic, but I'm gonna look into maybe changing it. I will address that obviously when I start that miniseries, if it is changed. But on to his traits that I will be giving him. Obviously he's already got three to begin with, those are the three main ones that if I can't get the mod that will allow me to have five to work, these ones he will have no matter what, which is romantic, non-committal, and paranoid. Those three are pretty self-explanatory when you know his background. He's a very romantic guy, but he does not want to commit. He just wants to have fun, just wants to mess around, and he's paranoid about all, all the people that he's messed up with the past, done things with in the past that, you know, they found out about, yeah, you're changeling, you're just using me, blah, blah, blah. They're gonna come and get him. <laughs> and the other two that I hopefully will be adding, which is ambitious and active, which are not so bad, but he is a very a more active si like person, I imagine. And he is ambitious because he does like traveling. Like, that's a side thing. Like, yeah, he's on the run a lot, but he does like traveling. So, and you know, it, you could look at it in a negative way. Maybe he has ambitions of seeing how many people you can be with. <laughs> Honestly, if I ever try to, there's this one thing that I sort of want to do, and you should be seeing the screenshots by right now. And I'm not doing my usual screen thoughts thing, because you could see that I did something slightly different with him, since he is a changeling. But yeah, I've thought about seeing, within a one sim year time span, playing a male sim, how many children I could end up populating the world with. And if I did it, I totally would use Raz. I, I totally would. Hands down. <laughs> <laughs> would use him. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see me give that a try at some point in time. I'm really thinking about it, but yeah. Also, Raz technically has showed up in another series, but I slightly altered him, but it is this sim. I changed some of the colors. I took the white arm off and stuff like that. Though I kept his name as Ray Torres, which, um, so if you've already seen him, this is what his original version looked like. But if you watch my Not So Berry Challenge, then you know he technically was one of Fawn's romances. <laughs> because she had to romance a lot of people. Well, he probably, he, he enjoyed it. He didn't care. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so yeah, this is um, Raz Torres. Let me know how you think about him in the comments below. And I hope you've liked this video and like, enjoyed his little story. One of my um, <laughs> slightly not so serious ones. He's a very promiscuous sim. Um, character in general. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I think I already said that, but you know what? I'm saying it again. You should be see seeing the pictures of him and Amaris together at this point. Loved the pictures of them together for like, I was like, these are a little spicy, but I like them. But anyway, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, comment, you know, that lovely YouTube goodiness and so forth. Feel free to follow me on my other social medias, which will also be down in the description below, as well as the D&D Mansion playlist. I sometimes forget to talk about that one, but yeah. If you want to see the build that will be used for this mini-series, there is a playlist down in the description below that you can click on. So definitely feel free to click on that. And for now, I'll be ending this one. Stay tuned for the 29th character coming up soon. So anyway, bye-bye!